Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey, and today we're gonna to do the study of Rage Blanket. I'm going to be using Peyton's Grace on camera today with the size D as in dog, and it's a three millimeter hook. Now the original was done with a five millimeter size um, H crochet hook, and I used Red Heart Super Saver brushed with that, and if you go to the link in the more information video of this video, you can find out more about that. And then the finished sample was actually done with a 10 millimeter size N as a Nancy crochet hook using Bernat blanket yarn. So if you are doing the black Bernat blanket yarn, it is three colors and it's two balls of each of the three colors. And you can get the color scheme breakdown on my pattern on my website. Just see the video description for that. So I'm just gonna do a little doily size here and somebody really did me dirty and I got really upset. So instead of just crying and eating myself through the fridge, I decided to put the crochet hook into my hand with the pencil and paper and I angrily stitched and designed this thing in one day. It is only 36 rounds. So with Bernat Blanket, you end up with a 62 inch diameter sample. I don't know what it's gonna be with this, but I wanna hook my rage into this and make it like a doily size and see how big it will go. So I'm going to be using this and we're gonna hook this. The color that you see is called Fiesta and it's really quite fun. And without further ado, let's get on our rage. So let's start sticking our stitches right up somebody's and let's begin our rage together. So let's begin and I'm going to start with the magic ring. If you don't want a magic ring, just chain two and use the second chain from the hook to do the 18 double crochets. For everybody else, if you want to do a magic ring, just do this. We have a video available, uh, several of them actually, um, for adjustable rings or magic rings, or adjustable circles are also called, and we're just going to make that. And we want to chain one to lock it. And I want you to put 18 double crochets around into the ring. Make sure you go up over the two strands for the entire 18. So count out your 18 and do it and be right back in a moment. If you're doing it with the chain two, just slip stitch to the top of the first double crochet. If you're doing it the magic ring style, just pull out your hook and grab this strand here and just pull tight on it and it will close off the center. Now it won't be completely closed and you don't want it completely closed, but you do want it firm, so looking something like this. I want you to take this strand and I know, look at this, a tapestry needle. You ready to punch something out? <laughs> so um, if I'm a little crazy today, it's to study your rage, so deal with it. Okay, so we're gonna just hide in the loose end in the backside and when we do it, we wanna do it a total three times. If that needle comes on the front side, I'm gonna reach through your computer and teach you a lesson. So make sure you glide it through and if, make sure you don't see that needle. Okay, so we're gonna pull through, go through once. Split the plies as well, just don't go between the strands. And just go back and forth a total of three times and you're good to go. So if you don't secure that in now, um, it's gonna fall out on you and then you are gonna be all ragey. <laughs> I wanna use the P word, but I wanna keep it somewhat friendly today. <laughs> so let's just put this aside and let's put this back on. So there is your center, it'll be nice and tight. We like tight, right? So we're just going to then join it to the top of the first double crochet right there. And that is 18. So if you need the stitch counts throughout this whole thing, my pattern is available, see the video description and look how nice that looks. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let's begin round number two. We're going to begin round number two and right where we've done the join is the first one and I need you to slip stitch into the back post. So just sneaking on down through the back side. I know it's the VIP entrance of the stitch coming through the back and then pop that to the back. And all you're just doing is you're just slip stitching yourself to that there. Don't be too tight because it'll bend over the top here. We don't like things bent over. <laughs> and I need you to chain just one. And right where you did that same one, I want you to do a back post double crochet. So we're just getting ourselves positioned so that it looks right. And so we're doing a back post double crochet. Now for this round, we are just going to chain one and then we're gonna go to the next post that is available and you're going to do a back post double crochet. So how many back post double crochets are you going to do in total? You better have said 18. And if you didn't, let's just pretend you did. So make sure you chain one after it and then keep going around and just doing a back post double crochet. Now I haven't used this thin yarn in a while. So if I, it looks like I'm struggling, 
I'm going to get all ragey, so, um, but it's worth it, and I'm going to keep on going. So it's going to do a really beautiful effect by the time you get around. So chain one and back post the next one, and I'll see you at the end of the round. When you get back around, there should be 18, and make sure you chain one after it, and you should be able to count 18 of these spooky thingies. And when you get back around, I need you to slip stitch to the back post of the first one. Okay, so just slip stitch to the back post and that'll keep it looking better. Okay, let's move on to round number three. Round number three, we're already in the back post here, so we're just gonna chain one just to give ourselves a little bit of a builder. And around each one of these, you're going to again do a back post double crochet. I know you're ready to reach through and say, why? Why do we have to do it? Because I said so. So now you're just going to chain two after that and go to your next one and do a back post double crochet around that one too. And so your repeat then is chain two and back post around each one of these going around and make sure you chain two after those and I'll be right back at the end of the round. So this is going to make it open up even more and I'll be right back. When you get back around, make sure you chain two after the last back post double crochet, and you're just going to adjoin it then to the first back post double crochet at the regular part of the stitch. So your project will be much bigger in your hands. We won't discuss how small mine is. <laughs> and let's begin row number four. Let's begin round number four. Right where you're sitting is on top of a back post double crochet, and I want you just to chain one and just focus on these chain two spaces and apply three single crochets in each. So one, two, three, and then jump to the next space and apply three double crochet or three single crochets in there as well. So do three single crochet in each one of these spaces and meet me at the end of the circle in a moment. So in the last space, there's three single crochets in there. Just slip stitch to the top of the first single crochet that you started with. And that was round number four. And you can see that it pushed all those spokes out even in your version. Let's begin round number five. Round number five, right where you are, just chain up one and apply one single crochet into the same one as the slip stitch. That's the first stitch. And then do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. No counting, just do it. And I'll be right back in a moment. I'm coming all the way around and I'm just making sure that I get every stitch. See this? This always looks like in the bigger samples that it's a stitch, but it's not. Just make sure you go into your very last stitch and the stitch counts are provided on the pattern if you need it, as I mentioned. So once you have that done, just slip stitch to the beginning like that. And therefore that was round number five. Let's begin round number six. Okay, we're about to do front post double, uh, double crochet clusters. And when you do this, you have to make sure that you are keeping the count and it counts as a stitch that it's sitting in front of. So we're going to start by chaining one and we want to do this cluster around this post. So when you reach down to double crochet and do your cluster, you have to provide a little bit of slack to get yourself back up a little bit and then pull through two and hold. And you're going to do that three times. So reach on down to the post and pull through Give it a bit of slack and pull through two and one last time. Pull through two. You should have three loops on your hook. Pull through all three and that is your front post double crochet cluster. So that counts as the stitch that it's sitting in front of. So in between each one of these, there's only two single crochets there. So see this is the post that matches below. So the cluster will sit here. So these two that you see are the single crochet that you have. So there's only two single crochets between these guys. So let's do a front post double crochet cluster. So reach on down, give it the same slack that you just gave it. And you're doing that three times. And this is going to provide a really amazing texture right at the center. So we have four loops, so we're done. We chain, uh, we uh, yarn over and pull through, and then we single crochet the next two. But if you lean it back, see this is the, the cluster right there, and these next two are the single crochet. And you see the single crochet matches the top, so this is where the next cluster is. Please do this all the way around for round number six. 
So I'm coming around, I've got my cluster and I have two more single crochets that are in a row and they're at the very end. So I just got those two and I'm going to join it with a slip stitch to the top of the first cluster that I began. Now in your sample here, this will may feel like it's buckling and rolling up because it kind of is on mine too. You have to trust this pattern. Um, it will lay out soon. We just need to get more, some, more stitch work in order to make that happen. So let's begin and go on to number seven. Okay, round number seven. I want you to chain one and you're on the top of the cluster here and I need you to put in two single crochets into that same stitch. And now you're going to have two stitches left before you hit the next top of the cluster and those are just going to be one single crochet each. So the easy way to remember this is at the top of the cluster is just put in two singles to the same one and then the next two are one by itself. And then you're back to the top of a cluster again. Please do this all the way for number seven. So I'm coming all the way around, I'm on the top of the cluster and then there's two stitches left before you join it to the first single crochet that was on top of the other cluster, right there. So I've gotten used to the thickness of this yarn, which is good. So let's move on now to round number eight. We're now going to create a nine petal flower. We're going to start by chaining one and applying one single crochet in the same one that you did the join with. And then I need you to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. I just need you to skip three single crochets. So one, two, three, and go to the fourth. If it helps you to know, it's the first one of the group of two single crochets that share the same stitch. That might be easier for you to see. Okay, so chain four. So one, two, three, four, skip three stitches. So one, two, three, and it's the first one of the group of two. And I need you to do this all the way around and I'll be right back in a moment. Coming all the way around, I'm just chaining four on my last space. So one, two, three, four, and slip stitch to the first single crochet. You should have a total count of 18 of these chain four spaces going all the way around. Let's move on and do round number nine. Let's begin round number nine. So right where I am, I want to slip stitch over to this space here, the chain four space, and I'm just gonna slip stitch over chain one and apply one single crochet into this space. You're now going to jump into the next space and the next space there's going to be eight double crochets. So let's count those out together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Once that's done, you're gonna to jump to the next space, single crochet, and then jump into the next one and do another eight double crochet, and you're gonna alternate between the two. You've already got the first single crochet in, so the very last space here will be the eight double crochets when you get around. Please do this around for number nine. So I now have my last eight in here. My single crochet has already started, so I'm going to slip stitch when I get around here and that is going to complete that round here, number nine. We're now gonna move on to number 10. To do number 10, you wanna to go to the first one of the group of eight, and you wanna just go in the back side and just slip stitch into the back post. And that'll get it started. And you're gonna chain one, and you're gonna back post double crochet around the same post. You're always gonna chain one in between all of the stitches, no matter what you're doing here. So you're gonna chain one and then do a back post around a double crochet around the next. And you're gonna keep doing this on this pedal. And I have to show you what to do in the middle here when you get there. So chain one and back post the next. So keep doing that with your pedals. So you're using all of the eight stitches there and making them all into a back post double crochet. So I'm doing the very last one of the group of eight and I have to chain one and then I wanna jump over 
and start the first one of the group of eight on this side. So I'm ignoring that single crochet that was in between. So I still continue with the back post and chain one and etc. So please do this all the way around. And this is round number 10. When you get all the way around, don't forget to chain one after the last back post double crochet goes in and then just join it to the top of the first back post double crochet. So we're now ready for round number 11. We're now ready for round number 11. There are eight back post double crochets, but we only want to play with the spaces between them. So that means there's only seven spaces. We want to ignore all the spaces in between the petals when we're do, doing about what we're about to do. So I want to slip stitch into the next chain one space to get myself into the space and we only want to play within the spaces. And you're going to start by chaining four, which will count as one double crochet in a chain one space. So one, two, three, that's a double crochet and four is a chain one space. So we want to progressively make this work. So the next space is going to be a half double crochet followed by a chain one. So there's gonna be chain ones between everything. So now here is going to be a single crochet into the next space followed by a chain one. And so there will be three single crochets in a row. So that was one, do the next space, single crochet and chain one and do the next space, single crochet and chain one. This leaves two spaces on the pedal. So the next one will be a half double crochet and a chain one. And then the next one is a double crochet in the last space of this pedal, followed by a chain one. You want to ignore this that separates the two pedals and you want to go into the space after the first pe next pedal begins. So you're going to start off with the double crochet first, chain one, half double crochet in the next, chain one, and then the three single crochets that you will have. So you'll have a single crochet, chain one, single crochet, chain one, and single crochet, chain one, and then chain one, and you have two spaces left. The next one is a half double crochet, chain one. The next one is a double crochet, and chain one and jump to the next pedal after the first double crochet here, the back post, and start again with a double crochet and chain one and etc. So please do this all the way around for round number 11. I've opened up the studio door so you may hear ambient noise. So after the last double crochet goes in here, you have to chain one and slip stitch to the third chain up of the beginning chain four to complete. And this is what row number or round number 11 looks like. Let's move on to round number 12. Let's move on to round number 12. Right where we're sitting is in the wrong spot. We need to be in the next chain one space. And there is a growth rate that will happen on this round. So we're going to begin by chaining three and double crochet into the same space. So we're only playing on the spaces on this round. So this is considered one space of nine. So you're gonna come into the next space and you are going to put in two double crochet. Okay, so this is two of nine. Next space, two more double crochet. This is three of nine. The next space, two double crochet. This is four of nine. Next space, two double crochet five of nine. Next space, two double crochet. That is six of nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The next space is two double crochet. This is seven of nine. Are you thinking Star Trek? I was. And the next one is the eighth space. So fill that in with two double. And the next one is nine. So put two in there. Now the next space that you will have, you'll put in three double crochets in there and that helps this thing to grow properly. So the growth on this one here is that you are going to do the next nine with two double crochets and the 10th one is going to be 
uh, three double crochet. You're going to repeat that all the way around and you will end up with three spaces that will be left over. And then the last three spaces, you're just going to put two double crochet in and that will give you the 132 stitches that we're looking for. Please do this all the way around. And this is round number 12. So I'm coming around and doing my repeat. I have my three here because the nine was done. And then I'm left with three spaces that are before I start. And those are just two double crochet each. That will conclude then round number 12. Okay, so let's just slip stitch to the top of the first chain three, and it should be laying relatively flat for you still, and that's the way I designed it. And let's move on to round number 13. Right where you're sitting, you want to chain a total of four. That'll count as a double crochet and a chain one space. So one, two, three, that's a double crochet, and the fourth is a chain one space. You are going to skip the next stitch right here and go to the second over, and you're going to double crochet, chain one, skip the next stitch and double crochet in the next, and chain one, and you're going to do that all the way around. So just skip every other stitch, double crochet in and chain one, and do this all the way around for round number 13. So coming around, I'm just gonna chain one after the last double, and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the first chain three. And that's what it will look like. So you have to make sure you have a 66 double crochet. So if you don't, just fake it or make it right, but you do need 66. When I finished round number 13, I was in the very last stitch and I chained one and I joined it to the big, uh, top of the chain three. I never said that, but that's what I need to do. So I created these so that there will be 132 stitches total, but there should be 66 of these double crochets that go all the way around. So it technically looks good right now because I'm on the end of number 14, but it may feel wrong to you when you're on number 13. So just trust it. 14, right where you're sitting, you're just gonna chain up one and single crochet on the top of the first chain three. That's your first considered double crochet. You're gonna double crochet in the next space and then one double crochet or one single crochet in the next stitch, one into the space and etc. So there's no growth on this round. It's just a matter of filling in the spaces to equally push out those spokes from each other. So single crochet in each stitch and chain one space around. I'll be back at the end of number 14. So I'm coming around here on round number 14 and I'm just filling in the final space and I'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning. Okay, let's move on to round number 15. Okay, round number 15. I'm going to start by chaining three. That'll count as your first double crochet. And then the next nine will each be a double crochet. So let's count these out together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So with the chain three and those nine, that gives you the number 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So the next one is going to be two double crochet into the next stitch. And the repeat going all the way around will be 10 double crochets by itself and then two into the next and do that all the way around. I'm coming around on the end of number 15. There's two double crochets into the very last one. That's because I'm keeping in that sequence of 10 double crochets and two to the next. So the two is in sequence. We're going to join to the beginning, just like that. And now we're going to begin round number 16. Let's begin round number 16. I'm going to slip stitch in behind this chain three and on the back post and just slip stitch to stick there. And then I'm gonna chain one and then I'm gonna back post double crochet around that same one. Now, the next one is gonna be a front post double crochet, and you're gonna alternate between the two of these going all the way around. So the next one has to be a back, and then the next one has to be a front, and do that all the way around here for number 16. I'm coming around on number 16, the last stitch before the end is a front post double crochet, and that's just keeping in sequence, and then you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the first 
So you may noticing that it might be buckling a little bit. Don't worry about it. It's going to settle out. And we are going to move on to number 17 with doing the samurai stitch next. So we're going to do the samurai stitch next in number 16. And I need you to slip stitch one stitch over. And the stitch that I'm just slipping out of, I'm going to be using as part of the samurai. So don't forget that you'll have that there. Now you're going to chain three. That'll count as your first double crochet. And you're going to double crochet the next two in a row. This is a beginning samurai stitch. Okay. So now you're going to go into the one that you started off with and you're going to double crochet into that one. So you're gonna go right over it and allow the strands to go around the three that you just put in and just pull from the back side, and you're double crocheting so that's wrapped around. So it's, it's in the stitch and it's also wrapped around. The next one is also a regular samurai stitch. So you're gonna skip one and you're going to double crochet in the next three. There is a growth on this round, so we have to pay attention to that. So we're gonna do the three. This is a regular samurai stitch. And you're going to go into this stitch right here where I'm pointing at. So you're gonna wrap and go around and let this wrap around those three. Pull up a little bit of slack when you do that. And pull through two and two. So these would be considered two regular samurai stitches. The third one in a row is going to be different. So you're gonna skip one and you were going to put in two double crochets in there. So it allows it to grow. So it'll stay sitting flat. And the next two are one double crochet each. So this gives it a different count on the tops. So you're gonna go into the one you skipped wrapping around, pulling a little slack, and finishing it. So let's go through one whole sequence. So we skip one, and we're gonna do two regular samurai stitches in a row. So we, we skipped one, and we're putting three single crochet, or three double crochet. You're going into the one you skipped. I almost find it harder with the smaller yarn but I'm gonna persevere. So you got one and then you gotta do it again. So you gotta skip the next and double crochet the next three. So go into the one you skipped. And now skip one and the next one is the increase. So the first one, so skip one, the next one has two double crochets in it. So one, and two, and then the next two are by themselves. And then you're gonna go into the one you skipped. So it's gonna be easy to count um, these in case you lose your way. You'll see that the ones with the, the extra stitch in there, it looks, it looks wider. So you, you should have a wider one and then two smaller, wider and two smaller. Okay, so the regulars, there are two in a row, and then the wider version there. And I want you to do that all the way around. So in this case, there's gonna be two regulars, and then a wider version, and then et cetera, around for round number 17. So I'm coming all the way around here on number 17, and the last uh, should be the, the group in the, of, the, of the two that share. And I'm just keeping in the right sequence, so nothing special that was done at the end. And I'm just going to come back and grab it all. And then I'm just going to slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three. Okay, and that's what that looks like. And now it's sitting flat again, which is what I want, of course. And let's begin number 18. Number 18, you're gonna get a counting break. So just chain up one and just apply one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. And this will give you the same chain count uh, or the same stitch count as the last one. Okay, so please do that. One single crochet in each stitch around for round number 18. I'm coming all the way around. I'm just single crocheting in every stitch and then I'm just gonna join it to the first. So this round number 19. Chain up one in the same one that you did the slip stitch to. It's looking a little loose for me. That's because I'm changing over the balls. I will secure in the loose ends. So there's a single crochet in the same stitch as the, the join. 
Now I need you to chain three. So one, two, three, and skip only two single crochets and single crochet in the next. And that's gonna be your repeat going all the way around. So chain three, so one, two, three. If I could crochet, it would be better. Skip two and single crochet in the next. Please do this all the way around. And when you come around, you're gonna have your chain three as your last piece. And then you'll just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. And that's where I'll see you in just a few seconds from now. So I'm coming around on number 19, I'm chaining three, and I'm just gonna slip stitch it to the first single crochet that I started with. Okay, so we should verify before you go any further that you have 52 of these chain three spaces going all the way around. And that means that there is going to be 52 single crochets, but if you have the right amount of spaces, there's the right amount of single crochet. Let's continue to round number 20. Round number 20. I am going to slip stitch myself to the next chain three space and then I'm going to chain one and single crochet. I did verify I did have 52 so I just didn't want to guess. So single crochet in the first. The next one over here is going to be seven double crochets into the next space. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Nice. Next space, single crochet, and then the next space, again, seven, and then the next space, single crochet, and etc. So every other space is gonna have a seven single cro or seven double crochets, and then the spaces in between will be single crochet, just like you see. Please do this all the way around for round number 20. Coming up to the end of round number 20, the seven double crochet should be in the last one and you're just going to slip stitch to the first single crochet and so far so good still laying flat which is awesome and let's move on to round number 21 next round number 21 you can give me crap for it now or wait <laughs> let me know in the comments i know you hate popcorn so but that's what it is today and you're just going to chain one just to get yourself started and i want you around the single crochet everything is uh, for the popcorns are on the front post and everything that I'm going to tell you for the petals are going to be on the back post. So to do a popcorn on the front post, you're just going to go and keep that front post in front and you need to do four double crochet. You're welcome. So we have one, <laughs> two, three, and four. Once you have your four done, I want you to release it off and go to the first double crochet you started with and pick it back up and pull through and chain one locks it. Okay, so you get this nubbly little thing. So now I only want you to focus on the middle five of the group of seven. So you're gonna skip the first double crochet and the last one, only focus on the five and those will each be a back post double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So you're gonna skip that last double crochet that's in the petal. And you know, you don't have to chain one or anything. I just want you to start and do, again, the popcorn around the front post of the single crochet that is in between the two petals. So just put in your four double crochets to start. So we have one, two, three, and four. Release it off, put it in the first one of the group of four, pull it through, and chain one will lock it to hold it in suspension. The next petal, you've Ignore the first and the last one, only focus on the middle five and make those as a back post double crochet. I need you to repeat this all the way around for number 21. This round will take you a little bit of time, so throw on a good movie and let me know what the movie is going to choose. Maybe Aaron Brockovich, something fun, easy to watch and entertaining at the same time. So do that and I'll be back at the end of number 21 in a few seconds. 
So I'm coming all the way back around. I got my five back post double crochets there and I'm just going to join it to the top of the first popcorn that I did. And now we're gonna move on to round number 22 next. We're now moving on to round number 22. If your sample is buckling like mine is, don't flip out about it. It's gonna work itself out, you see, you'll see. I want you to chain up one and we're gonna do back post double crochet. I know, kill the messenger. <laughs> and I want you to do a back post double crochet, including back posting the popcorns. And we need to count. I know it's the end of the world. So that was just one of 12 now. So we're now gonna count to 12. So do the next one. So this is two and three. Just treat those popcorns like they're regular stitches because they are. So we got four, five, six, and the seventh here happened to be a popcorn. and eight, nine, 10, 11, and 12. And now the popcorn happens to be next, but it's not always gonna be the same. And in this one here, there's going to be two back post double crochets around the same post. Now, if I, if I could just crochet, it would be even better, right? So let me just try again. Okay, so we're gonna do two around there. So the sequence to go all the way around will be 12 back post double crochets in a row, and then two back post double crochets into the next. And I need you to do that all the way around, and I'll be back at the end of round number 22. Okay, I'm back here at the end of number 22. You should have 168 double crochets in the back post. Now, for whatever reason, and I don't wanna backtrack and here's your ticket out of being able to frog yourself, I had, I was missing a stitch, so I actually put an extra stitch in there on the back post, you see the last two, to get myself to 168. So I'm not going to frog myself because nobody has time to frog themselves. So I'm just going to attach to the first one with a slip stitch. Sorry, well, I'm not supposed to be wrapping my hook. We're gonna to attach to the first one and call that quits. Okay, so if that happens to you, no big deal. Maybe if you had 169, you could do a two together, um, back post double crochet as well to get yourself there. And we're gonna move on to round number 23 next. We're now moving on to round number 23. I need you to chain up three. That counts as one double crochet. And I need you to double crochet into the next five stitches. So let's count these out together. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So with the chain three and those five, that gives you the number six, which is important. And then you're gonna do two double crochets into the next stitch. So your repeat pattern going around for number 23 will be six double crochet in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then what's going in the next one? Yeah, it's two double crochet, that's right. So let's do that all the way around and this will take you to the end of number 23 where I'll meet you back up here in a moment. So we're now back here on the end of 22 and the last stitch should be two double crochet into the same one. And that's just because I'm keeping the counts of six in a row that were double crochet and two into the next. And I'm gonna join it to the beginning chain three to finish off this round. Got a nice easy round for you, number 24. Just chain up one and just slam in a single crochet around uh, in each stitch, no counting, just do it. And I'll be back at the end of number 24 in a moment. Okay, I'm at the end of number 24. I'm just gonna slip stitch to the beginning single crochet. And now we're gonna start round number 25. Okay, we have a really fast round for you now, and we're, I need you to write, write where you're sitting to chain six. That'll count as a double crochet and a chain three space. So we have one, two, three, that's a double crochet. Four, five, five, and six is a chain three space. 
in the same stitch you just came out of, I want you to double crochet again. So we're creating a foundation for what's coming in the future. I need you to skip two stitches and then do this big V stitch that I call it. So it's a double crochet, chain, chain three, and a double crochet into the same stitch. So the repeating then, skip two stitches, and then put a double crochet, chain three, double crochet into the same stitch, and I need you to do this all the way around for round number 25. Okay, so we're coming around on the end of number 25. You should see the live chat that's happening on YouTube right now. I'm dispelling the beans. So, okay, so we're just gonna join to the third chain up of the beginning chain six, and it looks beautiful, it looks fun, it looks fabulous, and hopefully yours is too. And in the next round, number 26, we're gonna have a lot more fun too. And let's continue that journey in just a moment. Okay, so we're moving on to number 26. You got a nice easy round like we had before. I want you to slip stitch to the next chain three spaces and I want you to ignore the spaces in between them. So look at each one as a V stitch, because it is. And so you're gonna slip stitch in the first V stitch, chain one and single crochet in. The next V stitch, the chain three, you're going to put in seven double crochet. So let's count to seven together. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then single crochet into the next V stitch. Okay, so it's like before when you did it, right over here. So you're just using the space, one space is gonna have the single, the next one will have the seven double crochets, and that's what you're gonna do all the way around for number 26. So let's do that and I'll be back in a moment. I'm here at the end of number 26. I've got my seven double crochets in. Let's slip stitch it to the first single crochet that we started with. And let's begin our journey then. And, oh, I don't think you're gonna like what's gonna go on in the next round, but let's just stick it out and try number 27. Let's try number 27. We're gonna just chain one and I want you just to slip stitch it around that single crochet from the back post. I know, more back post. What are we thinking? Clearly I'm not. So we're just gonna slip stitch around the back post just to get ourselves into that position. And then I need you to chain six. So this will be like a V stitch again. So chain three, so one, two, three. That's gonna be your back post double crochet. Chain another three, so four, five, six is a chain three space. And around the same post in the back, do another back post double crochet. I know, the damn designer, right? Okay. So now that that's done, it's not over my friends, but we're gonna continue and we need to jump over this shell. So in order to do the jumpy jump, we're gonna just chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. So now you're going to double crochet around the back post of the single crochet. Chain three and double crochet around the same post. So you're applying the V stitch just like you were, but you're doing it on the back post and you're making sure that you chain five before you do the next one. So chain five and then go to the next single and do the same thing. So these will all be resting in behind the shell work. Please do this all the way around for round number 27. When you get around here on the end of number 27, I got my chain five and I'm going to slip stitch it to the third chain up of the beginning chain six. I'm good to go. So now you have this, it's kind of in behind, which is where I want it to be. And I'm moving on now to number 28. So moving on, I need you to slip stitch to this chain three space and I need you to chain three, that's gonna count as one double crochet. And I need eight more in there. So it's a total of nine altogether. So we'll say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So with the chain three, and the eight, it gives you the number nine. Now you need to put in a single crochet in here, but you need to sandwich it down to the fourth one here. 
Okay, so one, two, three, it's the fourth one, it's the middle one of the group of seven. So going into that one and making sure the chain falls down on top of the line and single crochet to sandwich it together to keep it together. So then you're gonna to go to the next V stitch again. And now it's gonna be nine. So I'll count those quietly in my head. So one, So I got my nine single crochet goes around this, but it's in the fourth one here of the group of seven. Okay, and single crochet there. So you're gonna do that all the way around. So the only difference last time is that there was seven, now there's nine, and when you single crochet, you're single crocheting, catching that chain, but into the top of the seven, the middle one of the seven. Please do this around for number 28. So I'm coming all the way around here on this round and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the first chain three. Now we're gonna do something slightly different in the next round, round number 29, and let's begin that next. Round number 29, chain up one, and I want you to put a front post double crochet around the single crochet that's right here. So you're backtracking just a little bit, but it's not enough to be all squirrely about. Now we have nine double crochets here. I only want you to focus on the seven. So ignore the first one and the last one, and we're back again to the double crochet in the back post just for the middle seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So you may not have to count it if you can automatically just ignore the first and the last one. Once that's in, then you go to the next single crochet and make it a front post double crochet. Okay, this gives it a more texture. So then jump into the next petal, jump into the second one that's in the petal and do your middle seven as a back post double crochet and etc. and do this all the way around for round number 29. Coming all the way around on number 29, I have my seven back post double crochets. I already started with my front post double, so that's done already. And I'm just gonna slip stitch to the first stitch there, which is the front post double. So we're now going to move on and we're going to move to the next one. So just move to the next stitch, slip stitch over, and that's where we're gonna start our next one, round number 30. To move on to round number 30, I've already slip stitched over one, so I'm just going to chain one, and I'm going to apply one uh, single crochet in each of the seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. I wouldn't necessarily count these. All I would do is that you need to skip over the front post double. So just ignore that's there. Just go right to the very next one, skip over it and just do the next seven. So every time you see the front post double, just skip over it and just continue to single crochet yourself around on this round, number 30. So I'm back here on the end of number 30 and I'm gonna skip over the front post double crochet because we kind of went on for it and go right into the first single crochet that we started with. So let's begin number 31. Right where you're sitting, you're gonna chain up three. That'll count as your first double crochet. And I need you to double crochet the next six in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So with the chain three and the six, that gives you the number seven. And in the next one, you're gonna put two into the next stitch, so two. So the repeat for this entire round is going to be seven double crochets in a row. So we'll do one, two, three, four, five, 
six and seven. And then the next one is gonna be two into the next. Please do this all the way around for round number 31. Okay, I'm all the way around on number 31. And we're now going to progress to number 32. In number 32, we're going to just chain up one and we're going to just put in eight single crochets in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then it's gonna be two into the next. So two single crochets in the next stitch. And you're gonna repeat that around. So it's gonna be eight by itself and two, th and two into the next. And this will be round number 32. And I'll be back in just a moment. So I've just come back around on number 32 and I'm just going to slip stitch to the beginning and then we're gonna start round number 33 next. Round number 33. I need you to chain one and in the first one where you've got the slip stitch, you want to put in um, a cluster and the cluster is going to be going in, pulling through two and holding it and then yarning over again, pull through, pull through two and hold it and one more time and in, pull through pull through and two and hold it. It's like a three together stitch. You're going to see four loops, pull through all four, and then I need you to chain a total of three. So one, two, three. In the same one, I want you to put another cluster. So yarning over and going in, pull through, pull through two and hold it. And you keep doing that until you see four loops back on the hook. Once you see the four, pull through all four, and now you're ready for the next one. So you need to skip three single crochets. So one, two, three, go to the next and start another cluster. So we yarn over, pull through, and you keep adding them until you get the four loops back on the hook. Pull through all four, chain three. So one, two, three, and then back in and do it again. So these clusters are sharing the same stitch, like a flower, I guess you could say. So what you're going to do is you're going to go all the way around. So you're going to skip three and then do your cluster, chain three and cluster into the next and so on. You will see a total of 70 groups all the way around. And if you want to count the individual clusters, it's a total of 140. But I would look at it in the sense of here's one cluster, here's another and etc. And you'll have 70 of those. So please do this all the way around for number 33. So I'm coming all the way around. You should be skipping the last three stitches before you do that, which is normal because you've been doing that all the way along. And I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the first cluster. Okay, let's pull tight and let's move on to round number 34. So let's begin number 34. We have an increase on this one. so. Every other space of the chain three is gonna be slightly different of each other. So we're just gonna slip stitch into the first chain three space. And now I need you to chain four, or chain three. So one, two, three. That's one double crochet. And I need you to apply three more double crochet into the same space. So we have one, two, and three. So with the chain three and those three, that gives you the number four. Jump to the next chain three space that is in the next cluster area. And this time it's gonna be five double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So here's your repeat for the remaining of the round. The next chain three space is gonna have four double crochet in it. So we have one, two, three, and four, and then the next chain three space is gonna have five. So please alternate between the four and the five double crochets in each of the spaces, and I will be back at the end of the round. And this is round number 34. Coming around to number 35, there's five double crochets in the last space, so you went four, five, four, five, all the way around, so the last space has five. Slip stitch to the top of the beginning, chain three, and let's move on to the second last round. 
So each one of the fours and the fives are going to be treated differently from each other because you'll notice on the outside of this is that the scallop looks different depending on if it's a four or a five. So if you're on the four, just chain one right when you start right now, and you're going to single crochet into there and then chain two, or sorry, chain three. So one, two, three, the scallop is gonna sit in that chain and then single crochet into the last one here of that same grouping of four. You are then going to double crochet around this space down here, but go right up over top of everything and compress it together and double crochet right around like that. So this is a group of five. So the first one will be a single crochet and then you're gonna chain four. So one, two, three, four. So you chain three last time because there was uh, four here. This time you're chaining four because there's five. Single crochet in the last one and then single crochet into the space down here. Okay, so this is a grouping of four. So single crochet in the first and chain three, so one, two, three, single crochet in the last one, and then go into the space down here, double crochet. This is a grouping of five. Do the first one, single crochet, chain four, so one, two, three, four, single crochet into the last one of that, and then double crochet down in between. So do the same idea going all the way around for this round, number 36. When you come back on the end of this round, just make sure that you do your double crochet down in between. You've already started with your first single and so you're going to slip stitch. Now we're gonna do our last round together and let's begin that next. So the scallops are different. In the ones that have the four, the scallop is as follows. So I just have the slip stitch over first just to begin this first one. We're gonna just chain one and I'm just going to single crochet into the first. Then I'm going to do a half, then a double, and then a half, and then a single, just like that. And what I'm going to do, see this one that goes straight down, just single crochet there and that'll hold it in position. The ones that have the five below, these are the chain four spaces. They're each going to be a total of seven double crochets. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, and then single crochet into the one that goes on straight down. So skipping the first one, it's this one. Single crochet there, and then do a small scallop because you're on the four. So it's single crochet, half, double, half, and single. Okay, then single in the one that goes straight on down and then jump to the next one, and this is gonna be seven double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then single crochet in the one that goes straight on down. So you're gonna alternate between the two different types of scallops depending on which one you're on. So the next one will be the small and then large and you end up with the edge that will look like this and that will be the conclusion. I'll see you at the end of the round. So I'm now at the very end. I have my last seven double crochets in. I'm going to single crochet to the middle one that we have been that goes straight on down and then I'm just gonna slip stitch to the first single crochet and that is ending this journey. So I'm just gonna trim my yarn, any yarn tails that you would have had that you want to fasten those in. I've been doing it as I've been going along. So I used a total of five Peyton's Grace balls, but um, the fifth one I have a lot left over. Um, but it's better to have yarn left over than not enough. So I wasn't really sure. I'm actually kind of surprised it took five. I would have thought it would take less, but this thing is much bigger than I expected. And if you're looking for any more details on this version, just I go to the more information of this.
this video or the video description and I will provide a link and I'm just weaving in the tails back and forth three times. So this is good to go. I'm really quite happy with the end result and it does sit flat and it's amazing. And this here is the study of rage. And I hope that you enjoyed this project today. Let me know in the comments and I hope to see you again real soon. Bye-bye.